from San Jose, in the heart of Silicon Valley, it's theCUBE, covering Big Data SV 2016. Now your hosts, John Furrier and Jeff Frick. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live in Silicon Valley for Big Data Week, Big Data SV for Silicon Valley, and also Strata Hadoop happening right across the street. This is theCUBE, Silicon Angle's flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signals from the noise. I'm John Furrier, my co-host Jeff Frick for this segment. Our next guest is Steven Sid, who's the Director of Product Management for Hadoop and Spark at IBM. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you, John, nice to be here. Um, so obviously the center of all the action is Hadoop World, renamed Strata Hadoop, but really it should be called you know, Big Data World because essentially it's about the platforms and the apps. You're seeing the, the, the shift and the power of the cloud really driving this, and we kind of predicted this last year, soaring, seeing it play out. So Hadoop has always been central for storing data, but now Spark has been very, very hot. We covered Spark Summit right. East, we got Spark Summit West coming up, a lot of action in Spark, and yeah. it's almost like the, the little brother comes out and grows up faster than the, the older brother, <laughs> if you will, with Hadoop. And there's a lot of interesting kind of posturing around Hadoop versus Spark, yeah. and one of the things that Joel talked about earlier was, the misconception that yeah. you have to have Hadoop yeah. in order to run Spark and there's some sort of sequence. Yeah. What's your thoughts on that? Is he, yeah. is he, is he right? Is that the, what people think? Is that what is required? What's your thoughts on that? Yeah, definitely. So um, first of all, good to be here. Thanks for inviting me. Um, so uh, yeah, so Hadoop is the 10 years uh, anniversary already as, as we all know. Uh, so as we first uh, uh, looking at the adoption of Hadoop, um, you know, it started mostly for, uh, you know, cost reasons, right? There's a mass amount of semi-structured data, particularly some unstructured data. It's not uh, cost-effective to store in the traditional data warehouse environment, so people put it in Hadoop, right? And then on top of that, they run analytics. So that's how Hadoop was actually uh, started and adapted um, in early years. And uh, over the o over time, you know, this like few years ago, we start to see the emerging pattern around data lakes um, and uh, uh, the way that actually use Hadoop to kind of augment the data warehouse environment, right? You bring all kind of data in the common area, you do ELT as opposed to e ETL, right? And then you clean the data, considering different data sources, including unstructured data, and then feed that into your front end warehouse environment to deliver business reports and uh, you know, applications. So that is a very common pattern that we're seeing. Uh, you know, of course, there are some, um, uh, still some difficulties on, on that kind of architecture, right? Primarily, primarily the, the, you know, the interactivity, interactivity is, is one issue, right? The, the speed, for example, right? Because Hadoop originally was more built on a, a batch-oriented approach, right? So the, the outcome of that is, you know, it's a great environment. Many of the corporations actually built, but getting wider adoption from the line of businesses, uh, at least based on our experience, has been somewhat challenging, right? So yes, augmenting the warehouse is fine, but we want to open up the data to access, for access for data scientists and business users to leverage that environment has been challenging because there's not enough interactivity or tools that can help them with that speed So is it a tooling platform analysis. issue or is it more of speed to value? I think it's a wide range, it's, it's, I think it's both, right? I think it's both. And as a result of that, and you know, people still doing, at least based on what we see, people still doing a lot of um, uh, silo applications. Uh, you know, people like spreadsheet, you know, many people live on spreadsheet and that you know, might be hitting on their laptop and still doing on the, on the database sitting under their desk. Right? So there's a lot of that issue, but that also, of course, is a culture general issue as well. So we certainly believe that um, you know, to get big data to the next stage with a wider adoption from the um, you know, conventional uh, uh, business organizations, it needs to have something uh, more interactive, more consumable, and Spark certainly is a you know, it, it, it's a key part of that as we start seeing it, you know, picking up the, <laughs> you know, the pace in the last two years. Um, and, and that's the main reason for us to you know, really invest in, in Spark and build on top 
of that set of tools. What's interesting, Steve, and I want to get your thoughts on this, is because the, the political landscape within the community is certainly changing. We're hearing in our community, and certainly I uh, heard it in the hallways last night, um, and, and you mentioned the line of business that, yeah. that validates your point. And it's interesting because the, the lines of business have really fun, exciting projects that yes. they're working on. Yes. And it's forward thinking, it's forward facing, Absolutely. it's revenue generating, it's application, it's sexy, it's fun. Yeah. And then what happens, we're hearing in the hallways is there's too much back office mangling of clusters. There's a lot of heavy lifting going on behind the scenes on just base management of Hadoop, and in some cases, uh, Spark, but mostly Hadoop. It's just too hard. Absolutely. So the, 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 the inhibitor is speed, of speed is just, it's too hard. Yes. And I can't find talent. Is Spark having the same growing pains that Hadoop's having? And, and what's, what's making Spark so successful in your mind? Is it the fact that it's easier integrating? And then, you know, final question, I'll, I'll get to the data yeah. science questions. But an, sure. Answer that first, the, the role of speed, Spark, yeah. and um, the, the hardness of... Uh, yeah, I think, I think certainly, uh, I do want to give credit to Hadoop though. It's a great system, right? We, it's very important for us. Um, you know, strategic for us, and you know, our product is built based on that. Uh, I think what Spark brings to the table is really about the, um, not only the performance, performance is one thing, right? The in-memory computing, all that is great, but from my point of view, the other key value that it brings is that unified, unified set of um, uh, API, if you will, right? And allowing um, really the data engineers in the cooperation and, uh, and uh, data scientists and application developers to more seamlessly work together and that's, on and a and common And goal. you're seeing that with the app side. We are seeing that on the app side. And many, many of the line businesses, the customer that we work with, they're saying data warehouse augmentation is great. How do I leverage the data so I can deliver new applications that can fundamentally transform my business? <laughs> Is it right? And to do that, you really need to take this, you know, three type of prayers with a new system that can work together. Now, Hadoop is very scalable, it's, it's great, but on the drawback side is it, it has all of these different pieces in the ecosystem which has different set of APIs, right? And different set of tools. And, and as a result, it kind of force these prayers kind of work somewhat in silo. Mm -hmm. Right, now Spark gives you that opportunity to kind of tight, tight unify, them together, that's the unify it. Right. Okay, so uh, I know Jeff wants a question, but I want to just kind of continue the thread because now you throw into the mix the role of the data scientist. And what I'm observing is, in talking to folks and seeing it over the past year, is this data scientist is stuck in the middle between yeah. the Hadoop community, which has always been a big part of yeah. uh, this show, Hadoop World, and what Spark is, because the data scientist just wants the data available. Right. They want to do R and or Python, whatever tools they're doing to, to manage the data. But they're leaning more towards Spark and the line of business because that's where the, their action is. They don't want to get stuck in the mangling and the setup requirements right. of the disparate back-end stuff. Yes. Are you seeing that? And what's your thoughts on, on the, how the data scientists, because they're an important part of this. Absolutely. And that's, I think that's one of the beauty of Spark, you know, from our point of view, right? It is, it's really not limiting the innovation or the way that the data scientists actually work. If they prefer to work on a, a smaller set of data to build their models initially, right, on their, on their laptop, right, which is perfectly fine, right? Yeah. Or if they say, I have a critical set of data that I could really use, is, is, is what we call, for example, the system of records, sitting in like uh, IBM mainframe systems, mm -hmm. right? I should be able to submit a job and actually run it, run it there and just see how the results will come back, right? But then, Spark also gives them the opportunity to say, okay, we do have like the data lake environment that all the data can also bring together and you can run, you can test your model in a mass amount of data in a real cluster environment that potentially can run, you know, longer duration, but you, you get a much, the result is you get a much more accurate uh, models that you're working on because there's more features you can work, you can leverage and more data that you can leverage, right? And that can enhance the application. So that is the, you know, that's a lot more freedom for the data scientists freedom. is how we see it. Okay, yeah. so I got, a, I got a tricky question for you. So you're at, you're at uh, Fortune 10 and you're talking to the CIO, big IBM client, and the CEO walks in. He says, Stephen, explain this for me for the CEO. What do I have, so I got this Hadoop thing I keep hearing about, the Spark thing I keep hearing about, and I've been spending a ton of money on, on BI for years and years. How should I think of it, again, the CEO, 
quick and dirty. Yeah. How are those buckets, you know, horses for courses, and what, what, what does each one do best? I think you've got to think about the, uh, um, the end results of what you want to accomplish. That's really, really important. In many of the CEO's agenda is really about how do they transform, you know, the new imperative um, uh, objective strategies that they want to transform the business, right? I think that they shouldn't focus too much on the, you know, the, 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 the infrastructure side, the, the uh, you know, the, the technology side, unless they have a very clear view on where they want to go. And that many times translate into new applications that can serve their customers and partners better, some innovative way that, um, you know, like we, we, we see that all the time, like the Uber and Airbnb, those are good examples of all of a sudden you have a, a, a new business model with, you know, fused by the technology, kind of disrupt the, you know, the, the, the traditional business in big time, right? So those are the things in the mind of, of, of CEO. We believe that in that conversation, we need to help them to really see what you want to deliver from an application standpoint and how the back end can help you to get there versus starting at the technology to say, okay, I got to, have, I got to build this Hadoop environment, I got to use Spark, I got to use a whole bunch of other technologies without kind of like a, a, a clear goal in mind. So, but is, is Spark then the enabler of the transformation via apps that Hadoop nor traditional BI ever was? We certainly believe so, and it's especially in um, enabling the data scientist part, because we believe that the future application is all about intelligence built into the application. It got to be smarter than what most apps are today, right? So in order to have the, the um, intelligence built into the app, you need to have the data scientists and the rest of the infrastructure and the application development team work hand in hand in a very agile approach. Because we know that generally how data scientists work, right? You, you, you have a problem, you collect some data, you build some models, you test the model, you deploy it and see how the reaction is. And if it's not good enough, you want to probably bring it offline, right. <laughs> bring in some new data, finding some new features, enhance your model. Think about that, that whole process without you know, without the agility and the speed to do that, it's going to be very hard to iterate through to deliver the rap, right application for, for your customers. And, then and Spark. It's just because it begs machine learning, too. As you're saying, smart applications, you know, a new class of applications. You think, well, machine learning, Watson, you know, letting the machine help modify the application based on yes. behavior as well. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Talk about the last couple of minutes we have here. I want to get you just sure. get your, um, your thoughts on your priorities from a product management standpoint. Obviously, Hadoop and Spark, obviously the priorities for your, your, your products that you're managing. What's the priorities for you? What are you working on? What can you share with the folks out there from an IBM standpoint? Uh, quickly share uh, what you're working on. Sure, absolutely. So we, um, in terms of strategy, we really have two parts, right? The first part is this ecosystem of open source capabilities, including Hadoop, including Spark, and any upcoming capability as well in open source is, is really great. You have the communities, you have very smart people working on it, right, from, you know, not just IBM, many other companies as well. Um, so certainly we want to leverage that, but we are also contributing to it, right? So even from the early days, we have IBM research technology, right? We have like the, you know, all start with a system. We have system S, system ML, system T, all those great things from IBM research, we're contributing a significant part of that, like system ML into open source. And we also have our STC, the Spark Technology Center, which we just opened up. And by the way, we only did it twice before, like for Linux and for Java. Now we have STC, right, for Spark. So we, and, and, and the folks there are just, their job is to enhance open source and make Spark more robust. So open source as the base for our foundation is a key part of our strategy for the platform. And our second part of strategy is to make sure that our capabilities that sit on top of the data platform will leverage the open source and especially Spark. Yeah, and that's the decoupling so, you're talking about, making it flexible. Making it flexible and making it able to leverage in you know, all the great innovations, including our contributions, 
that's happening in open source. So we have, you know, as, it's, as a you, it's a great hybrid strategy. You got the open source effort. You're fueling that. It's lifts lifts the market up. It's collaborative, and there's no real agenda other than supporting more great open source, and then having your products add value to that. That's pretty much the IBM strategy, right? Yes. Yes. Okay, so speaking of Hadoop and Spark, we will be at Hadoop Summit in Dublin uh, next month. Uh, the Cube is going to Ireland, so we'll be there having a few pints of Guinness, uh, talking about the batch in real time, Spark and Hadoop. Stephen, thanks for sharing your insights here on You're the welcome. Cube. Appreciate it, pun intended. Uh, Thank you that's much. your product, uh, Insights at IBM. Uh, this is the Cube, bringing insights and extracting the signal from the noise. We're here live in Silicon Valley for Big Data SV and Strata Hadoop. We'll be right back with more after this short break. <laughs>